In this video, we're going to look at the LZX Stairs Gen 3 module. This is a variation on the popular staircase module. There are several improvements and quite a few differences, but at its core, it offers the same functionality as a frequency multiplier and wave shaper. Like its older brother Staircase, Stairs is able to take a fairly simple input and produce a much more complex and interesting output. So to begin, I'm going to take a very simple input source. In this case, we're looking at a audio rate oscillator, which is represented on screen by a slowly scrolling bar. Stairs does have an RGB input, and we'll talk more about this later in the video, but for now we'll just use one input, which normals to all three. Let's take the two output and start to play with some values. And so you can see what was once just a basic scrolling bar has now turned into two bars. If I go to four, we'll get four, eight, etc. Let's leave that on four for now. We have a step control. And as you can see, we're going from a thicker bar to a thinner bar. And in between, we're getting just two bars at a lower setting, then to three, then to four. And phase is going to sweep through where in the bar we're getting that amplitude. And of course, we could take multiple outputs. So let's just go into different channels of our encoder here. Let's do 32. So now we're getting some nice taffy colors. Looks like a delicious candy bar you might want to eat on a hot summer day. And of course, we also have CV input controls for the steps and the phase. These are notched pots, which is really nice. So you can zero it out. So let's go into our steps control. Let's just try an LFO to start. Start bringing this up. So you could see that LFO is modulating the number of steps. And here it is modulating the amount of phase. But one thing that's really nice is we can also use the stairs to combine multiple signals by using the CV inputs. So we have our basic horizontal scrolling bar. Now let's take something a little bit more interesting. Let's take a shape from the dual shape generator. And let's plug this into the step CV and turn that up. So now you can see we're getting a nice combination. Let me just unplug this for a second to show you what the plane shape looks like. So you can see that's just kind of a really simple gradient. You can see it faintly there, those black bars in the background. There we go. Cool. And so this is a really nice, simple way to combine a scrolling oscillator with a more complex shape and to add a bit of complexity along the way because of the wave shaping of the stairs. One nice difference between the stairs module and the older staircase is the phase control works a little bit differently. So with staircase, it was very hard to get these kind of blackout zones in your pattern. The stairs is better optimized for these more discrete shapes. So you can see we're getting those kind of oval cutouts where the phase resets. And we can fine tune where that happens. So as you can see, this is a very powerful module for pattern creation with just a simple audio oscillator and the stairs module and one other shape generator. We're already starting to get something really cool. So in the next example, we'll look at an even more complex way to combine some shapes. So as we noticed before, the stairs does have RGB inputs. However, it only has a series of six monochrome outputs. Because so much of Gen 3 is RGB oriented, the designers at LZX made an interesting choice with the stairs module. Since there is no RGB output, what happens to these RGB inputs? Well, they get summed into a Luma signal, meaning just a black and white signal. But because of the nature of color spaces in video, these are weighted a little bit differently. 
So the green input is going to give you the strongest effect on your output. The red and the blue have kind of secondary effects. What this means is that you can use this module to mix a number of different signals. And you can do that in somewhat of an intentional way by taking advantage of the increased weighting of the green channel. So let me show you what this means. I'm gonna go into the green channel and then we'll just come out the two output. And we start to see these circles on the screen. So if I go into the blue out input instead, you're gonna notice that we get almost no image as opposed to that. So if you wanna play with mixing different signals on the input of the stairs, it's good to think of the green as your primary image and the red and blue as your modulators. So let me go into my red channel, the second channel from the dual shape generator. And I'm gonna pump the contrast over here just so we can see these shapes a little bit more clearly. So we're getting a really cool shape there. Now if I switch these around, you'll notice we're getting a very different result and you'll see it's very subtle. So it does matter which input you plug into. So let's go for a third input. And for the third input, let's use an LFO. So we could start to get some modulation in here. Nice. And you could see as we play with the phase and the number of steps, we start to get these cool little clouds. And again, we could take another output, go into a different color channel, and we start to get a little more complex stuff going on. And now we can go back to our audio oscillator from the last example and use that to get a little bit of scrolling modulation happening. And then another thing that's very nice is to take one of these inputs. Uh, we've got our primary, what I'm calling our primary input and our secondary input, which are two different images. Take a different variation of that and use that for a bit of CV as well. And that's just gonna really start to exaggerate that shape. And so it's cool because you almost have a built-in mixer into the staircase. Of course, if you want to get more fine control over that, I can patch both of these into a processing module first. And then that gives me more control over the actual mix. zero out these. Cool. That's just another great way to add another layer. But again, even without the processing module, just with the shape generator and a staircase and an encoder, uh, with some generic modulation sources, you can get some really cool stuff. For our last patch, we're going to take the same idea even one step further. So as we've already seen, Stairs excels at creating really complex patterns. And one way to get even more intricate with things is to introduce some feedback from the module. So I'm going to start again with a basic shape from our shape generator. We'll just take a quick look to see what that looks like. So here we just have a kind of classic diamond. And then let's see what happens if we take one of these other outputs and patch it back into the blue input. Aha. So now we're getting all of this feedback. You could see it's pretty intricate. If we go to a lower output, we're not going to really get so much. You can actually even barely see it. But as we go, to these higher multiplication outputs, you start to get more and more. So that's kind of doing this nice trailing effect. Now we may want to add some modulation to this. So I'm going to take that 
8 output, patch it into a processor module, and we're going to sum that up with an LFO. And so then we get this feedback kind of breathing. Now just to show you a couple of uh, different feedback options, instead of plugging this back into an input, we could also plug it into a CV. Now you're going to get these really cool staticky edges to things. And you can go all the way up to kind of pure destruction. And we could also use this to CV the phase. Yeah. So you'll get these different kind of related sort of effects. Now before we were going into the blue input, and remember these inputs are weighted, so the blue input's going to give us a much more subtle effect. If I go into the green input, it's going to totally take over. So let's keep that subtle in the blue input. And now maybe let's take the number two output. Maybe we'll put that into the phase control. That's a little bit more of a subtle one, remember. I tend to like a little bit more of a subtle feedback effect. Some people like totally crazy all out noise. But I like using it just to add a little bit more intricacy to a shape. Now let's do something here. Let's take another uh, audio oscillator. I'm going to put that into the B channel of a processor and I'm going to take, let's say, the big guy, the 64 output on the staircase, put that into the A input, and then take this out to my step CV control. Wild. Cool. So now we're just getting this kind of fuzz. It's just kind of all over the whole thing. And I can switch this, of course, to different audio oscillators. This is a nice one because it's, it's big and slow, so you can see that feedback starting to wave through the image. And then from here, we can just play with some different options. And again, you could take this really, really far And you'll start to notice that things get a little bit less predictable once you start getting feedback involved, but that's kind of the point. Switch through some different options here. Oh, there's a good one. And we can go from really, really subtle to very extreme. Get some cool stuff. And this is where the 1080p output on the ESG3 really starts to shine, this level of intricacy in those feedback patterns is pretty incredible. So that should give you some idea of how to get started with your stairs module. This is a real classic and it's a great early addition to a system. With just a dual shape generator, a staircase, an ESG3, and a bit of Eurorack audio modules, you start to get some really fantastic results. Being able to mix inputs within the module itself is a huge advantage over the previous generation of staircase. And I think the modules are different enough that they wouldn't necessarily be redundant if you had both in one system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.